Hi, and welcome to the February edition of League of Women Voters Presents. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about a uh, very exciting emerging new technology that has uh, the capacity to change many, many things that we're doing right now, from healthcare to uh, manufacturing to shopping to even eating. Uh, my name's Randy Picht. I'm the executive director at the Donald W. Reynolds Journalism Institute at the Missouri School of Journalism. And uh, I'll be your guest host tonight, filling in for Jim Robertson of the Columbia Tribune. Uh, and tonight's our panel that is going to talk to us about this new technology uh, is uh, Alan Chirac from Jefferson Middle School, Taylor Adams from West Middle School, and Bob Alley from the Columbia Area, Area Career Center. You know, it's funny that these new technologies, it's not that long ago that when you'd have a new technology, we'd have a show like this, and we'd talk about it and say, you know, in five years, this is going to be this huge thing. And today, whether it seems like it's uh, driverless cars or drones that are going to be delivering packages, it seems like we talk about them, and they happen in a couple months. And tonight's topic is the perfect example of that. Uh, tonight's topic is 3D printing. And one of the reasons that we have the educators here is because you're going to get a great idea of uh, how fast this is already being incorporated into our lives because we're, we're, we're teaching our, our kids at, at at the middle school level and the high school level and, and certainly beyond that. So to, um, to give you a sense of, of where we are in this process, we have a short video that we'd like to play now and then we'll come back and we'll talk about what's going on in Columbia. 3D printing is a technology that lets you take a digital file and turn it into a physical product. Almost anything you can imagine, people are creating. I think it's going to open up whole new opportunities in areas of mass customization. Unlike with music or movies, with a 3D printer, a lot of things that are printed aren't protected by copyright. One of the really cool things about 3D printing is it really changes the dynamic of a consumer culture. It turns you from being a passive consumer to an active creator. The 3D printing is this amazing new technology where you can take a 3D digital file and with the click of a button, use that file to create an actual physical 3D part. So how does a 3D printer work? The first step is to get a 3D file. And you can get your 3D file in one of two ways. One, you can simply download the file from the internet. The second way is you can design your own 3D part. The software is going to slice your part up into layers. By building a part layer by layer, you're able to create a plastic part in three dimensions, and the possibilities are limited only by your imagination. People will create their next big invention, or engineers and designers create small production runs or little prototypes. Teachers can use it to print out teaching aids. If a teacher is doing a little lesson on a ship, they can actually print out a sailing ship and pass it around the class. And people print out things for around the house. iPhone cases are pretty big. You break a towel hook, you can print out a new one. We want to make 3D printers at a price that the average person can afford and also easy to use. We're already seeing late stage early adoption of 3D printing, but for me the exciting thing is what's to come. Shapeways is an online 3D printing community and marketplace. Anyone in the world can upload their 3D model and we'll print it for you. And then also, if you decide you want to make it for sale, you can sell it and we'll produce it on demand for that customer wherever they are in the world. You can essentially bring a product to market with no risk. You don't have inventory anymore. You don't have to make sure that there's a market ready for your product. If you sell one, that's awesome. If you sell 10,000, then all of a sudden you have a passive income model and that radically changes the economy. Usually to bring a product to market takes a year and then you have to find the manufacturer and the investor and so it's going to force us to change the way we think about not only buying products but how they're made. One of our colleagues broke his stroller and it would have cost him something like $250 to get that part in the mail from the stroller company and he literally just 3D printed a stroller part and got it for $20. You have this explosive technology where everything is made just for you but at the price and quality of something you buy in a store. This could be a scary technology for some companies 
companies because what does that mean for seasons now? <laughs> you have infinite inventory and what does it mean for scarcity, which is one of the core tenets of so many industries. I think it's very similar though to social media or other tools of engagement where you're afraid to see what that would mean to let consumers co-create with you or to really rethink your traditional manufacturing process because you have so many middlemen. I think we just have to stop thinking that you need to reach 100,000, a million people for something to be successful. Customization is really changing the way that we have to think about design and production as well. People who make money by selling things that are all of a sudden easily copied with a 3D printer are going to be worried that people are going to be making unauthorized copies with those 3D printers. And I think one of the challenges for them is going to be, well, how do I react? Objects that are artistic objects, that are objects that you would hire an artist to make, those things are all gonna be protected by copyright. But those objects that actually do things, that have a use besides just sort of entertaining or looking nice, a lot of those are gonna fall outside of the scope of copyright. They might be protected by patent, but a lot of them won't be protected by any sort of intellectual property at all. And as a result of that, you can use them or improve upon them or build on them as much as you want, and no one can stop you. 3D printing right now is at its very beginnings. And so so you don't have a lot of case law about everyday people making exact copies of physical objects, and certainly not a lot of case law about people being able to do that on a large scale. The good thing, hopefully, is that the industries that are disrupted by 3D printing have the model of the music industry to maybe learn from. The music industry, when someone started copying things, decided the best thing to do was take their time and their money and invest it in suing everyone they could find and try and stop the progress of technology. That didn't work very well. And so the hope is that these creators, when they see this new technology, they capture some of the upside and they say, oh, wait, this can change my business for the better. And they do that. It's a hard thing to do, but the music industry has taught us that it may be the thing they have to do. 3D printing is going to have a profound impact on all of us, whether you consider yourself a designer or not. In the future, there are going to be 3D printers that will allow you to actually create three-dimensional structures out of living cells. And they can build very complex structures like blood vessels or skin tissue. And the idea there is that in 10 or 20 years, these scientists are going to be able to 3D print tissue that can replace damaged vessels of the heart. Or they're going to be able to print replacement organs. So you won't have to go to find an organ donor anymore. You'll just be able to have one 3D printed at the hospital based on your own cell and your own genetic makeup. Right now at MIT, scientists are working on 3D printers that would actually allow you to print food. And who wouldn't want that in their house, right? If you could just ask Siri to cook you a steak. I mean, it's really going to be an exciting time in the home. In Japan, there's a company that's taking sonogram data. So they scan a pregnant woman's belly, and they're able to actually 3D print a figure of her torso. So instead of just having a fuzzy little black and white picture, you're getting a real model of what your child is going to look like. People are using 3D printers to do all sorts of interesting things in terms of the environment. Researchers are using 3D printers that can print concrete to make replacements for parts of the Great Barrier Reef that have been damaged. Normally, those reefs take thousands of years to build, but what these scientists do is they find the areas that are damaged, they make CAD replicas of those damaged areas, and they print them in concrete. So it's a base structure upon which coral can create a top layer, and that helps reinvigorate the environment and helps return normality to that area. I mean, one of the coolest things about 3D printing is that it's a community that never stops innovating. There are hundreds of innovators who are making little tweaks to these products, who are trying out different things, and so it really gives everybody an opportunity to create anything they could imagine. 3D printing is the next wave of how brands and consumers can engage, and now we're just starting to see that happen. In a few years' time, they're going to be no more difficult to use or difficult to understand than a camera phone. The way to protect creators and designers is to make sure to give people a way to spend money on 3D printed things. In the future, we're going to see a lot more people unleashing their pent-up creativity, and that's what's most exciting for me. All right, that's very exciting. So uh, let's see what's going on in Columbia. So uh, Taylor, why don't you start and maybe set the, set the scene for us and what's going on in the middle school with uh, what you're teaching and, and what, how it's going. Well, there's, in all the middle schools, um, we have 3D printers now. And we just went down last year um, as a group, all six middle schools. Um, and we got a new curriculum um, that we've implemented. And it's called Project Lead the Way. Um, and it's a problem-solving or problem-based learning um, 
curriculum where the kids have to actually go in and get their hands on the material they're going to use. And what we use the 3D printer for is to teach them how to use um, a CAD program or computer automated design program. So they, they can design things on the computer and then print them. Yeah, if they can see it and they can imagine it, they can make it. Mm -hmm. And do, I, I also saw uh, on the way over here while I was looking at that you can get one at Radio Shack for 150 bucks. Are kids, are kids saying to their parents, we want to buy a 3D printer? And yeah, they really are. <laughs> <laughs> we have kids in our class that, are, that come in, they're like, oh, Mr. Adams, I really want, you know, my mom said she'd give me a printer this year for Christmas. So we had a couple kids that actually got a printer. Um, so they've been just, they come in, they print, and they show me the stuff they print. So we kind of compare back and forth what you're able to do. And you have how many kids in maybe at West and then just in general in the whole district, do you think? I have 150 right now Wow! this year that will use this technology in our class at West, at least 150 kids. And do you have, what's the range of things that they make typically? Um, we start as small as we make one by one inch cubes, so they just have to learn how to make the cube. Um, I've had kids make iPhone cases. Um, we make... We made a pillow block. Uh, they all make this pillow block, and we had to, I actually printed it. It took about six hours to print, but after I was done, I printed it and pulled it off and was like, hey guys, this is what you're making. And I was able to show them, and it was just that aha moment where they all, it, you know, everyone was, you know, excited that it was done, and it was really, it was a neat day. Hmm. Well, one of, at the end of the video, uh, the, one of the uh, speakers was talking about how this is going to un unleash this, this creativity. So, so, Alan, how, what is going on now in terms of that in the schools as, these, as you're teaching it and maybe as there's more excitement building and, and, and talk about that a little bit? Well, you know, let's, let's take this example right here. Now, this right here is a little gargoyle, and it, it sits on top of the pencil. And, you know, I, I had this printing out, and the kids got really excited, you know, trying to figure out what it was going to be, you know, <laughs> first off, because, you know, everything builds up from the, from the ground up. And once it was done, you know, all the kids are like, oh, you know, what is this? Can I buy it? You know, can I buy it? I'm like, no, you can't buy it. But, you know, let's, let's work on trying to draw something similar to that. And, and what the kids did is they, they designed their own pencil toppers. Mm -hmm. and, and kids are really into a game called Minecraft. And I told them, hey, if you design it, um, you know, I will 3D print it. So what the kids have to do then is, you know, they got to measure the top of a pencil. And they got to get the different dimensions and the depth and different things like that. And if they do it wrong, they print it wrong, you know, their little Minecraft pencil topper doesn't sit on it right. So then they got to go back to the drawing board, and they want it to be right. So that they really got to learn about math and tolerances, um, science, technology, engineering, math. We really hone in on that in, in the middle schools. And the kids was able to figure out, you know, they asked me, well, what does it cost to make one of these, you know? And I had some students. What they did was is that they weighed this, and they took what the weight of the spool of plastic was. They took the cost, and they figured out what it cost to make one of these. Hmm. And they was able to work it out to where how many of these would they have to print and sell to their fellow classmates <laughs> in order to get their own 3D printer. <laughs> so they, they figured that all out on their own. And, and it was kind of a neat little deal. And just little things like that, you know, on the table um, right there, you know, we've got a spinal cord um, that the kids was able to download and 3D print out. And we've got a little part that goes to a music instrument. And the kids, you know, I, I point them out to different websites to also get some more ideas of what the possibilities are. And, and really from there, with the students and their natural creativity, they're able to figure out what they want to make and what they want to design and just go from there. And it gets them excited to learn about that CAD program, which will help them get a, a, you know, a good high-paying job later on in life. You end up seeing a lot of, they make a lot of toys mm -hmm. is what comes out of it. It's really cool because you print them and then you get to play with them. And, mm -hmm. Sometimes they, you know, they screw up and you have to go back and redesign what you've made. And it's that, like, going back and redesigning where they really, where they do all the learning. Um, it's almost kind of, it's, it's enjoyable to, like, to go through that process because you watch them learn and you watch every single gear click for them. It's really, it's, it's really intriguing. And do you find that it's, uh, you know, it, it, I guess they have to use both sides of their brains, mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. artistic side a little bit and... But uh, is it more the engineering kids that are into this or more of the artsy kids or is it a combination? Uh, I, 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 I mean, yeah, it's just kids in general. <laughs> it's kid, they, it's, it, it's yeah. neat. They, they all want to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. 
And how long, so is it a semester long or a year long? Semester long class, so, they're able to take it. And do they, um, do they like have it, do you have advanced or just one, one class they take it and? Uh, what, well, what we'll have next year, because um, it's the first year we've implemented it. So what we've done okay. is we've just kind of taught it to everybody. So next year we'll have a couple other, we have another course we're going to offer. And what we've really been trying to do is figure out ways of just, impl we've been like trying to figure out ways to put it in. Mm -hmm. So there's really no set curriculum. The sky's With the limit. 3D printing, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can really do whatever they want. Me and Alan on the way over here mm -hmm. were kicking around a project that we want to give to our kids. Yeah, I mean, it's just this right here system, it allows, it's another vehicle to get them excited about doing more math because everything has to be precise, you know, to get this pencil topper to fit on there. They've got to, they've got to precisely measure and they've got to be able to figure that out. And it's, it's a tool that we use to enhance the skills that we know they have to be you know, good at with that science, that math. And we show them, this is why you need to know, understand decimal places. This is why you got to add and subtract fractions and, and, and to add decimal places. And all, and all those you know, different processes, it makes them want to learn it because they're going to get this little pencil topper right here. Yeah, it makes right. the teaching easier because yeah. they know, you know, they can see the end. They can see the end result. Yeah. All right, and so uh, you mentioned high-paying jobs. So, Bob, maybe since you're the uh, career expert on the panel, maybe, and, and also someone who's been doing 3D printing for the longest, yes. maybe you could sort of paint the picture of what it's like, what, what you can do with this if you get really good at it. Well, I really came from the manufacturing side. Um, that's what I was trained to do. And when I came to Columbia, we bought our first 3D printer. It's been about 14 years ago, 13, 14 years ago. And we were really looking at the engineering students. They needed to understand form fit. They needed to understand function. They needed to understand tolerances like you were talking about. So when you have a group of kids who I'll bring in a component, maybe a weed eater or a blown motor or you know, just something we want to fit together, it allows a group of team members to work together on the fits, the tolerances, the design itself. How are we going to make it a mold? Or are we going to cut it? Are we going to print it? So all these different avenues. And when it comes to jobs, uh, I had a young lady, she was a nursing student. When she saw the 3D printer, she wanted to get into prosthetics. Um, I had a young man who was an architect, architect student from uh, KU. One of the portfolio pieces he has was one that he printed in the class. It was a picture of his prototyping, and they're like, you can prototype? And they're like, yeah, and he was hired. So it just helped him get above the rest of the fray, you know, kind of get out of the, the mass. He, it made him an individual. And uh, if you have the skill to model, now you have to be able to model, and, and the kids see the eye candy. We, we in my class call this eye candy. Okay, and that's really what it is. It's, it's that, that hook that really they see, which you can motivate them to the ends of the earth, if you wish. It just depends on what you want to do. And jobs, um, the cheaper and cheaper this gets, and the, more sh the layer thickness, as it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, then the stronger the parts will get, the more fine they'll get. It is pretty much limitless, what you can do with them. And like their printer, costs um, quite a bit less than mine, but like I said, we were the first generation. Um, ours was a little more expensive. Um, it costs a little more to print, but there's no reason you can't uh, use that great technology they have in the classroom now, uh, whereas I was the only one in Columbia that had it for years, and now everybody's getting them. Mm -hmm. So, And what do, you, what do the students do with your printer at the... Well, most of my center. students that are using mine are the engineering students. Their kids are going into mechanical, electrical, aerospace, whatever they want to do. Sometimes we're just using them for one thing I teach is dimensioning and tolerancing, you know, making you know, parts that mate, making them actually fit. So they understand, you know, I've got a piston going to slide through this, this uh, head. Um, well, if I go, don't print it correctly or if I don't have the right tolerances, when they go to put it together, they go to turn the crank and it snaps it in half. So like, that's a problem. So if we sent out 100,000 of these and they seize up every time because the tolerance was wrong, we just went out of business. Mm -hmm. So it allows them to quickly, rapidly change designs. We could throw it on the printer. And instead of having to build like a die, a mold, you know, to have to do something that costs thousands and thousands of dollars in industry, um, it allows us to print it out real quick and kind of get a good feel for what we have. Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't have anything and then we can go right back to the drawing board like they're mm -hmm. talking about redo the engineering side, redo the functionality. You know, sometimes it's all about you just feel it and you go, wow, this just doesn't feel right. Right. So yeah. then I go, well, let's, let's start carving here and shaping here. And then I go in and start talking to them about material. 
all right, we just made a part. Now, guess who gets into it? Accounting, sales. Mm -hmm. They go, sorry, we can't sell it for that. You need to make it cheaper. Mm -hmm. So we start thinking about, mm, where can we take material away? Where can we, but we still have to have structure, right? We still have to have support. We still have to keep it from breaking. Well, the software they're using, the software I'm using, it'll tell you stress. It'll show you where it's going to fail, fatigue, um, which is, it's awesome. It's a great manufacturing tool. We also use it for our animators, like you were talking about, the artistic kids. They love to see their miniatures. We, we go in and make characters walk around in my class, the advanced classes, animation classes. So they'll build their own characters. We'll put bone systems in them and skin them. We'll print them out, and they can take those home and show this is, this is my deal. And then they can show the video to their parents. Hmm. That's the same stuff they're doing in the AIs. You know, that's the same stuff they're doing out in the real world. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's going. And I'm glad to see it's now starting at the younger age. You used to have to be a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. to, to That's get, the one time you got to use. <laughs> to get started. Junior, now senior. Started now they're doing it. We got six well, what, what do you guys six think? Yeah. So, you know, there was a time when if you wanted to print a piece of paper, you mm -hmm. had to send it to the printer. Yep. And then we started getting office printers, and then now you have one on your desk at home. Mm -hmm. So you print at home, and you can do color, and you can do two side. You do all kinds of things. It's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, if you think about how far we come. So how do you guys see kind of the evolution of this from a you know, everybody's using it kind of thing. Like, because like you oh, mentioned, Bobby you can print things out yes. and say, it may not be the part you put in the machine, but it's, it's a good replica, you know. And, yes. it, you could, you, and from the video we saw, you can eventually, you're going to have different materials you can print and mm -hmm. food and all that stuff. They can, well, like right now, the, as you can see from the video, there's a possibility if you see something, you want it, you just go and, and you can go to the, lots of different websites. And the, and the industry still hasn't worked itself out yet on mm -hmm. which one's going to be the go-to yep. one for that. Correct. Um, but there's a lot of different websites out there now that you can go and you can either send them your file or you can shop online with what you want. And some are manufactured at the company, mm -hmm. and other times they're outsourcing them to people that have 3D yes. printers in their home <laughs> yep. to save on shipping. So if somebody mm -hmm. in town has a 3D printer that prints quality stuff, mm -hmm. then a parent could technically send them that file and they could have a 3D printed of their kid's favorite character in whatever color they want for mm -hmm. Christmas, yep. you know, that nobody else would ever have, mm -hmm. you know. So the, the industry right now is just really going through a, um, a, a very rapid growth stage. And I tell my it's students, yeah. it, it, I tell my students, this is like being equivalent to being around when the, the first phone was invented. I, I think that this industry is just really getting took off the ground and, and where it goes from there, everything from 3D printed organs to... Oh, there's the prosthetic on the, the table. The prosthetics yeah, I mean, right there. That is amazing. The first prosthetic initiative with um, MakerBot, they're actually trying to put out prosthetics to people that are cheap to make. So kids, you know, they can grow their whole life making their own mm -hmm. prosthetic limbs. Hmm. Um, that's what that hand is out there. And you can actually you can size that thing up for your own hand by just a little bit of simple multiplication. Hmm. You just figure out how wide your hand is, multiply it by this yeah. ratio, and then Pulls boom, you got out. one for that'll fit your hand. Hmm. So they're making them to where, you know, they used to cost thousands of dollars. That one out there costs like, I think it's like $2 wow. to print. So you're talking about, you know, people, really empowerment mm -hmm. is what that freedom. is. Freedom. It's freedom. It's really freedom. Yeah, freedom. Yeah, you yeah. can do, yeah, right. And, and other things too, things that have, uh, they're no longer able to be made. Uh, classic items. Uh, we have a gentleman who brought in a shotgun. That's a classic. It's never. It's not firing anymore, but he wants to be able to display it, and he lost one of the hammers on it. So he asked us if we would be able to create the other hammer um, for it, and that's what we're doing. We have a couple students. They're miking it all out. They're going to model it up, and we'll print it out for him, and he can paint it and texture it, whatever he wants, because it's ABS plastic. So he'll be able to have and put it back in, in for display um, so it doesn't look incomplete. The same thing with car parts, you know. You have classic cars. Um, yeah, right. You know, they're using parts like that all the time. You can't make this anymore. I've got a, you know, an old classic car and maybe uh, something off the thermostat's broken. It's the housing busted. I mean, you could go ahead and make your own. Uh, and, right. And if you're using ABS plastic and uh, the right coatings, who knows? You will print all your engine. You're you not, break your door handle on your car. Right. You're not going to be able to say, you know, you can't get that anymore. That's right. You, know, you can make right. it. You make it yourself. That's right. You know? That's the, where it's going. The, the key, I think, where... You know, where the money's really going to be made with, you know, where kids are going to go into, they have to learn how to design. Yep, right. So this gives them the ability 
to actually put that you know that skill to use mm -hmm. and then they learn the design they learn how to design and that's really what you're teaching yeah hand in hand you, mm -hmm. you have right. to design mm -hmm. print uh, that didn't turn out the way I thought it was go back to the drawing board yeah make it again but if you don't have that design component and you buy a 3D printer mm -hmm. and take it home, you're just going to look at it and it's going to look at you. The, it's it's gonna, gonna, and you're yeah. just going to, you can only do what other people have done. But if you have that, you know, that knack to go make, you can, you know. You come up with an idea and you just walk in and boom, boom you do it. Model it, print and, it, and go. The sixth graders are using the exact same CAD program yeah. as what yeah. our career students are using. Right. So, yep. I mean, we simplify it. But the kids, I think a lot of parents don't understand just how tech savvy their students, their mm. kids can be. Yeah. And, you know, I challenged them and they're able to do, my sixth graders are able to do a lot of the same projects as my eighth graders right now. I mean, just, I, I just simplify things down and they're actually able to grab it and pick up with it. And they're just like a week and a half behind them on the CAD program itself. So, the, you know, and this is industry standard program. Mm. This isn't you know, a simple version that you think, you know, that kids would just download as a simple app. Kids are able to use a industry mm -hmm. standard program in the middle school right, right now. So, so what do you guys see in the next, you know, year or so with 3D printing? You, 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 you just introduced <laughs> it. I mean, it's, everything's going so fast that... They're getting cheaper. So They're getting cheaper, so you're going to start seeing them. You're going to see more of them bought. I think uh, I think bigger companies are starting to produce them as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think I heard something about Dell producing mm -hmm. them. Dell, Hewlett Packard, they're trying to buy a lot of these different startups because there's there's people out there now that are able to make their own 3D printers. They have one 3D printer and they're 3D printing the parts to make another, another 3D, 3D printer, printer, and they're buying the motors, <laughs> buying the board, and board, board, and they're putting it all together. So they're they're creating their own their own components, their own projects, and their own system. Um, and then you're seeing them get acquired from some of these different big software and hardware manufacturing companies. Um, you know, so there's just all these different types of 3D printers. You know, this is just one model right over here. Um, I, you know, I've got a grant out there now. I'm trying to get to where I can get the newest, latest, and greatest version of that right there. So it's the, the sky's really the limit. Um, I'm glad to see that. You know, there's not a lot of uh, patent wars going on with the 3D mm -hmm. printing industry. It just right. seems like they're... Won't slow it down. It, it, and, it, and just like in the video when they're talking about, you know, Napster and stuff like that, you know, they're not going to be able to regulate this industry at all. There's just too many outs for them. People's already figured out the technology. You can buy all the components in, individually and you can assemble them on your own. So... Well, but, it also is a teaching tool. I'd, uh, add had in there, when you look at a schematic, a drawing, and it's lines and dimensions everywhere. Sometimes that's hard for a kid to visualize. Right. But when I can take a test part like that and I can say, the thing you struggle for two days on to do the sections of the multi-view, there it is. Mm -hmm. There it is. Wow, that's what that line was? Yeah. You know? Well, it's, it's an amazing subject. We could probably talk about it for the rest of the night, but <laughs> yes. it, it, it looks like we're out of time and uh, we've covered a lot of ground and it's great to know that this is going on in Columbia. So thank you very much for being with us. And we'll see you next time.